For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or become an official student at patreon.com forward slash Daxterbells. All right, guys, let's do this problem. One second, find my brush. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> let's do this problem that says replace the force system acting on the beam by an equivalent force and a couple of moments at point A and then do the same thing at point B. So these problems are super easy. You just gotta be methodical, but basically, you know that the sum of the forces is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3. I'm gonna call this one F1, I'm gonna call this one F2, and I'm gonna call this one F3. So you have to find the Cartesian vector form of each of these forces. So F1 has an X component and a Y component. The X component is going towards the left, so it's negative, the magnitude, and we're given a triangle with ratio, so just build the ratio, which is four over the hypotenuse, and that is equal to negative two. And the Y component is the magnitude, is going down, so it's negative, 2.5 is the magnitude times the ratio of the triangle, which is three over the hypotenuse, which is equal to negative 1.5. Therefore, F1's Cartesian vector form is minus two in the I, minus 1.5 in the J. So we gotta do the same thing for F2 and F3. F2 has an X component and a Y component. The X component is the magnitude and we're given an angle, so it's times the sine of 30, which is equal to 0.75 and the y component is going down, so it's negative, the magnitude times the cosine of 30, which is equal to negative 1.3. So the Cartesian vector form is 0.75i minus 1.3j. And F3 just has a y component, so it's negative 3j. So now that we have the Cartesian vector form of the three vectors, all you gotta do is add the y's with the y's and the j's with j's, and you're gonna get that the resultant force is minus 1.25i minus 5.8j, uh, and the unit is kilonewtons. And that's the Cartesian vector form of the resultant force. They usually want it in um, magnitude and direction angles, so, to convert it to polar form, it's uh, 1.25 square plus 5.8 square and all of that square rooted. And you're gonna get that the resultant force is 5.93. To find the angle, all you gotta do is the tangent inverse of 5.8 over 1.25. And you're gonna get that the angle is 77.8 degrees and since it's in negative in the x and negative in the y, you know that that angle is pointing that way, this angle. So all we did is converted this to polar form. And this is the answer for the resultant force. Then they want you to find the sum of the moments about A. So the sum of the moments about A, you know that What's causing um, what's causing the forces? Do, I mean, sorry, what's causing the the forces that are causing the moment? You gotta divide them up into x and y components. So you have f one in the y, f one in the x, f two in the y, f two in the x. So you know that F1 in the Y is causing a moment around this arm that is two meters. You know that F1 in the X is causing a moment, but we're assuming that this is a flat, like one whole line since we're not given the thickness. So 
if we assume this is going directly onto A, in other words, if we assume A is here, then F1 in the X is not causing any moment, then F2 in the Y is causing a negative moment times six. This is negative because I am assuming that counterclockwise is positive, by the way. So F2 is going down and it's turning this six um, length, six uh, meter lever arm, it's turn, trying to turn it clockwise, so it's negative also. And F2 in the X is not doing anything because we're assuming it's flat. And then the last one is F3 times the lever arm of eight, trying to move it clockwise too, so minus three times eight. So once you plug in F1Y and F2Y, which are given here, and this is F2Y here, you're gonna get that this is equal to negative 34.8 kilonewton meters, or 34.8 kilonewton meters going clockwise. Some of the moments A. Okay. And for some of the moments um, about point B, the, the resultant force is the exact same thing for A and B. So that's it for the resultant force, we already found it. And then the magnitude of the moment at B is equal to what is creating a moment at B. Well, F1Y is doing it, F2Y is doing it, and F3Y goes directly to B, so it's not doing anything when in regards to moment. So the sum of the moments at B are equal to F1Y times six plus F2Y times two. And they're both positive, assuming counterclockwise is positive. So this is 11.6 kilonewton meters, counterclockwise because it's positive. Final answer for the moment at B, final answer for the moment at A, and the resultant force for A and B is the same given right here.